Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, may I start? Please, yes. please start. Yes. So, uh, good morning, sir. Good morning, ma'am. This is Ray Sugar, and today I'll present last class recap. In the last class, sir, there was a detailed view about the issue of coordination. When we started the unit, we talked about organizing, division, creating delegations, and other functionaries also. Here, the issue of coordination arises when we divide the organization into different units. That is, they must not pull apart in different direction. For example, our university is divided into three different levels: the academic level, the residential level, and the administrative level. The academic level comprises the entire faculty. The residential level comprises of the hostels and the halls of residence, while the ad acad uh, administrative level comprises of uh, three functionaries: the registrar, the controller office, and the finance officer. So, what if uh, these any one of these wing doesn't work properly? Then definitely that would cause uh, the impact on the functioning functioning of the other wing also. Here the challenge is break apart, but still we have to bring together. So imagine a situation when uh, uh, there is lot of rush or crowd in the hostels. Then definitely there would be an impact on the functioning of academic wing too. That's why we need coordination. That's why that's why we need co coordination. as an example given by sir is uh, the making of a scheme by uh, various for various departments this uh, uh, in the best possible way to do so is to give the charge to the chairman of the department in consultation with the students but if this responsibility is taken by the controller office then there would definitely be a clash in dates and opinions and sometime these clash in the opinions or perspective increase to a level that these unit that these units Uh, start to pull apart in different direction so the core issue for uh, here is uh, how to resolve these conflicts in the per, in opinions and perspective so we have three methods to resolve these conflicts the first one is method of dominance this is most common in families also here the approach in dominance method is i win you lose as an above example uh if uh, the controller has more power that's why that became a dominating party and now where whatever suggestion you may give that would be useless because the final result would be there so this is one method for resolving the conflict another method is method of compromise in this method the approach is i win some i lose some likewise you win some you lose some compromise is a method in which each party give a bit and resolve the conflict for example um when uh, uh, There was a when there was going a setup of a residential coaching academy. So there was an idea of uh, uh, providing sitting fees of about rupees thousand, but uh, in front of VC. But uh, first of all, but uh, in uh, primary situation they uh, denied this proposal as that would con create conflicts among the university. But later on VC approved the rupees five hundred as a fit, uh, as a sitting sitting fees. So this could be called as uh, this is called as compromise. Later on, sir asked a question that is it fine to resolve the conflicts by using dominance or compromise method? So absolutely not, because in dominance method, one party gets supremacy while the other party feels neglected, which is not good for a team spirit. Likewise, in compromise method, we have to lose something also, in spite of winning. So a third method called as method of integration was find out. this method was explained by sir by using a real life example when he along with few members were uh, housed in a two story building which was a part of sir sayed hall they were looking for uh, the setup of uh, rca that's why they require a room which could accommodate 100 plus students in a single go that's why they required the merger of two rooms by removing the partition wall for that purpose they called university engineer to remove to suggest something but after analyzing he said that that uh, could not be possible because that wall was the way carrying wall of the building so what could be done in such situation because the coaching academy the academy's requirement was also genuine then uh, to find out a third possible way they called the university architect who suggested that we could use the, the first four floor for this purpose and in this way the concern of engineer and the you know and the requirement of the coaching both were retained or we could say that uh, both the ideas were integrated so this is the best possible way to resolve the conflicts among the two parties but this pro but to this math could work out only when neither of the party have any question about the aim of each other's party so in this way we could work out coordination that's all from my side thank you thank you
थैंक यू Coordination is the process of organizing people or groups so that they work properly and bend towards a common goal of the organization. When we talk about organizing, creating delegation, or assigning responsibilities, so whenever we create divisions in this hierarchy, it could be because of functional basis, product basis. The most important thing here is that they should work together. In our EMU, we have three divisions: academic, administrative, and residential. Academy wing comprises all faculties departments of the faculties. Residential wing comprises hostels. Administrative wing comprises primarily three functions: the finance officer, the controller, and the registrar. Assisted by the pro vice chancellor and who reports to the vice chancellor. Suppose these units are not working coordination. If there is overcrowding in hostels, we cannot run academy simply. Or the residential system is not in any way responding to the challenges. It will create huge problems of law and order. When we create divisions, the authority are divided into various units. After some time, it gets more and more power. For example, the controller office might have started as a uh, support institution. Its main job was to assist the main departments, which were the main function unit of the department to conduct that exam. To admit students and gradually start getting in more and more power than they deserve. That is, as a result of it, conflict arises. In the example of finalizing schemes of the exam, chairman is in better position to decide time and centered as he is directly in touch with the students. Whenever we divide work, there is difference of opinion and those differences often accentuate increase and as a result of it, the organization is pulled apart rather than working in a common direction. Generally, there are three ways to resolve the differences. First one is domination method, which is seen in the families also when conflict arises. One party dominates, other party rules. For an instance, the controller office has more power than department. They will finalize the scheme. Whatever is said by the other party, but the ultimate decision would be of the dominant party. Through compromise and this approach, I win some, I lose some. Likewise, you win some, you lose some. Each party gives up a bit, and then we resolve the differences. For example, in the residential coaching academy, there was an advisory committee. Which had very high profile members used to meet once or twice in a year. So, officer proposed a model of setting fees whenever the meeting is called, but the finance officer refused the model, saying that we have many meetings in the university and it will be a problem for us. But, sir, persuaded by Chancellor, sir, saying these people may not expecting anything in cash, but in kind, as we should, should have some gestures towards them. Sir, proposed model of uh, uh, rupees, thousand rupees, but eventually it was decided of 500, which is good, as something is better than nothing. Method of integration in the case of residential coaching center, the building was part of the historic building, Sir Sayyid Hall. It's what the building, there were four rooms on the ground floor and at least two rooms, two of these rooms in classroom classroom. These rooms have a capacity of 60 students, but when we used to organize special lectures, strength would go 100 plus. So we wanted to create a facility that could accommodate 100 plus students in one room. Now, this would be done by creating separation between the two rooms. Sir so, consulted the university leader, he checked the wall that was expecting to be removed. He did it at the end and said his, it's a historic building and no very wall. So, if you remove it, it will have a structural instability for the building. For knowing the differences, he invited the architect. He considered the uh, university engineer opinion and search need and with mutual consent he proposed to implement it on the first floor rather than on the ground floor. In this way the difference was resolved. This is possible only when we focus on the basis of the university on the common terms. We are thinking on the welfare of the university. Sir so never questioned university engineer motive and the engineer never questioned search functional need. Integration is the best way to resolve the differences in the organization. We can coordinate if we have common for the a subsystem of shared responsibility. We all feel for the university, all the university members feel committed for the organization. 
that approach helps in this one and integration is the third way to stay together. That's all from my side. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you, Reshu and Keshu. So, uh, should we share their feedback or we should share it in the end after this so, yeah. to... As you wish, sir. Okay, so I'll share it in the end. So, Dr. Zareen, so let us begin with the... Uh, right, sir. Recap. Right, sir. Can group 5 and 6 please start presenting? Group 5. Yes, yes. Uh, good morning, sir. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Good morning, Kashish. So, ma'am, so, ma here I am today for the unit recap of the unit third that is organizing. Uh, can I start? Yes, please. So, the first question comes, sir, what is, uh, what is, uh, what is organization? Basically, organization is the pattern of relationship. It is interwoven. And in the organization, people work towards the common goal under the supervision of their manager. Basically, these goals are ambitious and far-reaching. And in order to achieve these goals, the organization has to work effectively and efficiently by, by the coordination of the human itself and resources. And the second question comes is, what, what are the goals of organization? So, obviously, the goal of the organization is to achieve a common goal and and to implement their plan properly. And the third question is, uh, what are the four building blocks of the organization? Basically, the first building block of the organization is ident identification and division of work, group employees and task as division of work. The work should be uh, divided in a way that it should be attainable, at, it should be manageable. And the third building block is specifies uh, who to whom, basically the organizational hierarchy and the fourth building block is set up mechanism for integrated departmental activities into a whole and the third and the fourth question is what is organizational hierarchy? It refers to how an organizational or company is organized how the work is divided in the company according to someone's qualification and skills so they should be able to do that work properly and nicely and the third fifth is what is departmentalization it is a process through which an enterprise activities are grouped together and assigned to the employee departmentalization is basically done in two ways uh, first in according to the function that they are providing and according to the product that they are making okay and the uh, fifth and the sixth question is what is the identify what is the what are the logical what is logical grouping basically it is the identification of the similar jobs and operation it is needed when the organization is large so they can work smoothly and they can attain their goals in the in the proper manner without any confusion in Okay, and the next is what is matrix structure? Basically it is a structure when people and resources are grouped in two ways and this structure is also called multiple command uh, multiple command system or two boss employee system and uh, next comes is structure follows a strategy when uh, when organization is working under pressure so there is a need to revise their strategy and when the organization is revising their its strategy so it is also important for them to update their structure in order to attain their goals properly and in order to go attain their goals in the plan way that they have in the way they have planned and basically there are two types of structure tall structure and the structure in the tall structure it is better for the small organization and it facilitates close relationships and and in the flat structure there is low level of hierarchy the people uh, subordinates do not have to depend on each other for the decision making they, they can take their decision quickly and nicely without waiting for their subordinate to agree on that thing so this is all for my side and now Kanishka will continue. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kanishka Sharma. I'm going to cover the topic power, authority, and responsibility. So power is the ability to exert influence on the other people. And authority, it is just like it refers to a person. So legalized or legitimate power is authority. 
responsibility is defined as the obligation of a subordinate to whom a duty has been assigned to perform so now we will discuss about the sources or bases of power we know there are two types of power personal and position and in this we know the position changes so we should have such kind of power base that we don't uh, depend on the uh, positional power base now there are five sources of power first reward reward is come from the ability to reward uh, reward other second coercive power it comes from the ability to punish us third is legitimate power it comes from from the position of hierarchy and the fourth is referent power it is based on role model that is to follow uh, the uh, just to become like a leader then the fifth one is the expert it is the power to knowledge skill and information there are uh, two bases for form, uh, formal authority the first is the uh, classical view which is the top to down authority subordinate accept authority it means they obey the instruction that is given by the superior then comes the acceptance view it is from, uh, it is a bottom to up authority authority lies in the uh, receiver so the superiors cannot as, uh, exercise the authority if subordinates are not well with it now comes the range of acceptable authority so chester benard benard supported this authority the acceptable authority and gave us four condition under which a person will comply the higher authority the first is understanding the communication second is consistent with the organizational goal third is compare uh, compatible with his personal values and interest and fourth is mentally and physically able to comply with now come uh, now we will talk about the line and staff authority so line authority is uh, directly responsible for achieving goals it is represented by the standard change of command <clears throat> the line authority is based basically on the legitimate power decision is often uh, taken by the ma uh, line managers and it creates value then come uh, comes the staff authority they provide the technical expertise and services and advice to the managers the uh, staff offers uh, line managers the advice by doing research analysis and options development then the staff manager can also assist in policy implementation monitoring and control in legal and financial matter it is basically to protect the value now there are some conflicts in staff and line so uh, it can arise due to when staff is younger or more educated of higher social status and ambitious then there can be some problems older uh, this can also uh, arise when the olders which are more experienced uh, they uh, uh, tend to dislike the advice from the younger staff then the third point is that line manager uh, tend to view staff in uh, uh, in encroaching on their duties and prerogatives line manager believe that staff does not give sound advice and uh, steal credit and fails to see the whole picture so they dis disagree in this way staff view line as a bull headed and they resist their uh, new ideas now the question is why do we need staff so there are basically two reasons first is size or volume of the work so the advice and counseling which is provided to the line executive divides the work between two the line executive can execute on one uh, one specific purpose so by dividing the work the work can be easily done the need of expert uh, support is needed because the line uh, executives are new and they don't know how to do a uh, work properly so the staff gives them uh, with research and planning and investigation they give them a proper uh, support so this is from my side uh good morning so my name is yashwil uh, i would like to confirm am i audible yes yes uh, sorry this is it <laughs> so i need to just yes sir so 
the topic for the day is delegation decentralized in coordination so we'll be starting with delegation it refers to the downward transfer of authority from superior to subordinates in this process only authority is delegated while responsibility can also can not be a part of the subordinates it is kept with the managers so that the manager is ultimately responsible for ensuring the completion of the job on the other side there are some delegation issues which means were called the dilemma of delegation which are as following lack of confidence in subordinates lack of ability in superiors lack of proper control lack of information and lack of resources on the other side when we move towards centralization and decentralization centralization refers to organization structure where decision making power is confined to the top management and the subordinates needs to follow their orders and instructions which are given to them to by the seniors under decentralization it refers to the delegation of authority throughout all the levels of the organization that is the power is in the hands of the departmental heads for a further response we can say when delegation is in a structured response it is known as decentralization further on the basis of comparison there is a short comparison between delegation and decentralization because there is a slight difference between delegation and decentralization for example delegation is as we have defined delegation means handling of the authority from one person of higher level to the other person while decentralization dissemination of powers authority and responsibility from one person to another person or to the departmental heads which is known as decentralization on the other side delegation is a cause while decentralization effect in accountability section we can see that the superiors are accountable for the acts done by the subordinates under delegation while in decentralization departmental heads are accountable for the acts of concerned department parties when we consider about the parties parties are superior and subordinates on the other side decentralization top management and middle low management and level management yes for the organization requirement delegation is necessary while on the other side decentralization it is optional it may be adopted or it may be not under the liberty of work subordinates do not have full liberty under delegation while in decentralization there is a substantial amount of freedom for everyone at least they have every every person has a moment and has a chance to speak and to express what they want to do for the company on the other side the control when we say the control is ultimately in the hands of the superior in case of delegation while in case of decentralization the head of the department or the division have the control all further we will like to conclude the coordination which is the last topic for the unit so coordination is integration and synchronization of the efforts of group members to provide unity of action to achieve common goals that is a quote is said and suggested by my side that coordination it must exist or there is no organization it's just an experience which i have seen so how to ensure a coordination for an efficient working of a company there should be a method of dominance that is in cases where the dominance is needed by the board there should be a method of dominance followed while in the method of compromise in cases where the uh, subordinates suggest something and it should be implemented then there the method should be of compromise where each person has the integration has the say on the other side of method of integration it is a method which is quietly followed in all the organization and which is really needed for the organization to further better performance of the organization that's all from my side thank you <coughs> okay thank you can we have the sixth group presenting good morning sir good sir morning. i have informed the ma'am about hamza's condition that he is not in condition to give recap yesterday and today also our other two members ali and kashif due to the due to some personal reasons are not able to give their recap so shall i please in my part i have prepared delegation decentralization and coordination now better go ahead Okay. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Sana Fatima. I have prepared uh, delegation, decentralization, and coordination. So first, we discuss delegation. Delegation is an act of pushing down authority from superior to subordinate level. So assigning responsibilities from authority or job traditionally goes hand in hand. Uh, hand in hand. Uh, with the delegation of authority to get the job done authority can be delegated while responsibility cannot sometimes when we delegate to others some problem may arise which was discovered by mentors as a dilemma of delegation uh, as in order to delegate we have to do briefing uh, which consumes more, much more time 
sometimes some behavioral problem at subordinate level also arises as when you assign work to subordinate it appears to them as an additional burden and which may substantially result in substandard work and you may not be fully satisfied with the quality of work so in order to navigate things in an efficient manner we must ensure that number one we do right kind of pacing and number two to provide subordinates with all the required resources in order to get the job done these resources are information and physical resources that we have observed that delegation comes inside long term view which in which we prepare subordinates for the future goal and in contrast to long uh, long term view there is a short term view also in which manager avoids to do much time in briefing and instead he prefers to do uh, and instead he prefers to get the job done by himself and this results in the satisfaction of work now we come to decentralization decentralization involves delegation of authority to subordinates for some decisions or most decisions while maintaining essential control a decentralized organization is one in which we delegate authority with some authority authority for most decision is delegated to various department head while uh, some essential uh, while power to an essential company wide matters is maintained at the headquarters office so we can see that decentralization results in division of power now and decentralization is coupled with proper monitoring and feedback system and if we are able to create decentralization this will prove to be the best thing in an organization as it generally as it generally uh, empowers lower level employees and help them ownership of process uh, now in contrast to decentralization centralization results in concentration of power that is power is confined to the top management level it is a top down approach uh, it has a this uh, it seems to be advantageous as it results in more efficient decision making but it has a disadvantage also as uh, Managers at lower level see less involved in the decision making process. Now we come to coordination. Coordination is the function of management, which ensures that different departments and groups work in synchronization. It is an important entity as it ensures that it balances inequalities and resource teamwork. When we create division, we divide authority among various units and. there is a possibility of of arises different in opinion these are op- these opinions may often increase in which this and as a result organization is pulled apart so here the question arises how do we ensure uh, coordination uh, how do we uh, resolve these differences and ensure proper coordination so generally there are three methods number one is method of domination it is a victory of one party over the other uh, as a subordinate we may only suggest but the final decision is taken by the dominant party it follows the approach i win and you lose and when we resolve differences through this method uh, one party gets supremacy while the other one feels neglected Uh, which truly which naturally affects the culture of organization and which is not good for the team spirit of the organization the second method is method to compromise uh, in this each party deserve a bit it follows the approach i win some you lose some likewise you win some you lose some and the last method is method of domination it is a way which incorporates the concern of both parties which are differing on same issue Discussion can be constructive rather than destructive because the sole purpose of both the party is only for the betterment of the organization, and and this is the best ma- best method followed by followed by any organization as to ensure coordination and resolve differences. Thank you. That's all from my side. <coughs> Thank you, Sana. Uh, may I know who were the other members who were supposed to present? Uh, 
ویلنٹائن and second an alternate arrangement is proposed and agreed to isn't it so he has texted me uh, in the morning i am also informed to zarina but i don't know uh, no, this is not that is what i am saying this is not a professional way of uh, doing things so please tell them that they have missed their chance because uh, last minute there is no possibility of making an alternate arrangement isn't it yes sir So, okay. this has to be communicated to <clears throat> when the class is going on if you inform just uh, uh, some time before that uh, it is just not possible to utilize that time then if efficiently so it is good that you presented your part but uh, please communicate this to your friends so yeah. now, uh, now uh, coming to the recaps that we have had both uh, the topic recap and then the unit recap both i, I am very happy with the quality of the presentations today and uh, starting with reshu she was very articulate and uh, her content was also very appropriate and uh, so was of keshu's uh, presentation uh i am very happy that uh, they both of them internalized the content quite effectively and then uh, presented it in a uh, nice manner so well done keshu and uh, reshu thank you thank you and uh, starting with the unit recap uh, uh, i am very happy with the quality of uh, the content which was arranged Uh, Skashish, you also have a very good style of presentation. Uh, very uh, effective, very effective. And uh, Kanishka, you also did a good job. Except for one part in the content, when you said that you, know, you were talking about the line authority, and you said that they may they may be new in the field, and that is why they may need expert uh, advice. It is uh, not like that actually. Uh, line people are generally very experienced like for example the vice chancellor of the university now a, a person who has been a professor in the university for so long knows the working of the university quite well but there are some special issues issues which arise uh, on which uh, the line managers may not have the expertise for example i shared with you the example of uh, university's minority character case now this required legal insight so the vice chancellor may not have that kind of insight that is why he needs advice on particular issues especially issue for example if university is going to shift to an online mode of information system and uh, the traditional method the vice chancellor can manage but if uh, you have to implement let us say a software based information system in the organization naturally the vice chancellor would need the support of an expert or advice of an expert is it so it is not that line managers are new and that is why they need ad- advice they are experienced in their own domain but when it comes to you know certain very specialized responsibilities that they have to for example now information has become extremely crucial for managing the university especially ever since we have started you know rankings of the institutions whether it is uh, nec accreditation or uh, an nrf ranking national renewal framework ranking now in this timely availability of information is extremely important and all universities including ours we are thinking of evolving a method of a system 
through which the information is available to the outside we have already you know done a lot of work on the website and we are making an effort to ensure that all the information is available on the university's website but still you know there are gaps which have to be filled now how the vice chancellor should resolve this issue naturally if somebody suggests that you can have an online system whereby the decision making whatever level it occurs it is fed into the information system like for example if say if somebody is promoted as a professor from being associate professor earlier now the moment this decision is taken it should somehow get fed into the system information system so that immediately by the click of the button you know how many professors are there in the university if somebody wants to know so this is the the issue which we need to understand kanishka that line is generally very experienced seasoned campaigners but they require support of experts in unique domains in specialized domains that was the <clears throat> and yes uh, i am very happy with your presentation especially the slides that you prepared uh, i especially liked your slide on delegation and de decentralization the tabular comparison that you did for uh, for the uh, aspects and they were maybe i was not uh, i would re require some kind of more elaborations when you said the nature uh, of delegation is Uh, cause and decent decentralization is the effect so yes. once i'm through with my feedback if you can uh, comment a bit more on this and elaborate this part it would be good <coughs> now uh, uh sana you have uh, uh, done a good job especially that when your other team members were backing out it is very difficult to sustain Uh, our own motivation to live up to the expectations so that's good sana that you lived up to those expectations uh, and you did a good job uh, in terms of presenting the content in the right earnest maybe just to bring a bit more force in your delivery and that would do good to your style you appear articulate you have good command over language uh, just bring more uh, force in your delivery and that will make an impact even more impact on the audience so yes uh, can you uh, now comment on that aspect again uh, yes uh, should i show the slide again ha you can you can please that would be oh, okay sir uh, just a second sir uh, under delegate am audible yes very much yeah so uh, under delegation it is a cause because delegation is something which is necessary for the organization under delegation we means that handing over the authority from one person to another it is like when the superior just ask the subordinate to suggest but the actual power is in the hands of the superior so it is just a cause just like a spark on the other side when it comes to the effect effect is decentralization where the power is divided further among the parts of the organization like top management middle management low management so the effect will be from at all the organizations while main power should be under delegation is authorized under the power of superior effect is something where in under decentralization it is said that the top management and middle level management and lower level management have the powers to decide and take decisions for their various departments as well as the departmental heads are accountable so it is a effect because every department will have their separate effect under this so this is a basic difference between decentralization and delegation which is cause and effect can we put it like this uh, that uh, you know delegation is what we practice and once we practice it uh, over a period of time the effect of it is decentralization yes sir is it it yes so sir. maybe i would put it like this that uh, uh, 
uh, when the delegation, the the culture of delegation, is practiced in the organization, that yes. becomes the cause of uh, this becomes the cause of decentralization. So de decentralization is the outcome of you know continued practice of delegation in the organization. Sir, and we have already discussed. We have uh, already discussed. Yes, yes, sure, sir. This can be just simply related with the last line which I said in the previous slide, which was that when delegation is in a structured response, it can be a decentralization. Yes. So when delegation, it is a cause. The effect will be as a decentralization. This yes. can be also said as assumption. Very good. Sorry, that's uh, good uh, that we had uh, some discussion on this aspect. And there is one aspect on which I perhaps uh, during the course when you are discussing the units, uh, I did not comment. And today, because we have uh, some time left, I will comment on that aspect. the The idea where a structure follows a strategy, isn't it? This was the idea which was presented today also by <coughs> the unit recap, which was done the by by the by the fifth group. Uh, now, what is the idea actually? Actually, this uh, simple statement, which sounds so simple, structure follows this strategy, is an outcome of a very detailed research study, which was carried out by a business historian. I think the first business historian, his name was Alfred Schindler, and he studied uh, top four American corporations and how they have grown over a period of uh, 20 odd years, 20 plus years. And uh, based on that extensive research study, he finally concluded that study with this statement, which said, culture follows a strategy. What does that mean is, you know, generally what happens is that organizations, they start as a single product organizations. For example, uh, let us take our own case. When we started our MBA program, you know, it was started as an MBA program, MBA evening program. Uh, that was the only program that we had. And later on, it was converted into a day program. So from an evening program, it became a day program. The nomenclature continued to remain the same that is MBA in MBA general and we had the option of dual specializations in that somebody can opt for marketing and finance somebody can opt for marketing and HR and like that and this continued for quite some time till 1996 when we started our second product which is international business MBA in international business isn't it? Now we have, you know, two more programs added to the kit. So what happens is that when organization undergoes change, it requi requires a structural response also. For example, right now the chairman may be uh, handling all the four programs, but a stay may come when it may require that in fact informally it is already happening for example most of the issues related with mba hospital administration our senior colleague professor salma ahmed looks after them because there are all kind of issues related with coordination with hospitals and to ensure that the students get practical exposure during the course of the program to the working of a hospital so there are demands which are slightly different from a regular MBA kind of program and therefore this uh, statement by Alfred Schindler who said structure follows a strategy so whenever there is a strategic change now starting a new course in the department is a strategic change isn't it so when we start a new course can we run that same course with the same structure which has been followed over the years. Some change is actually required in the structure also. That is why this is statement by Alfred Chandler, who said, 
structure follows a strategy. Actually, this simple statement is the outcome of 20 years of research which he did with four large American corporations. And he studied their history. He studied how uh, most of them from a single product organization became a multi product organization from a single geographic segment organization became giant corporations and uh, with their spread in various countries of the world so he said ke, when the organization makes a strategic change in this manner the structure has to respond to that change then only the strategy is supported. You can't run the same organization with a change strategy using the same structure. That was the core point of Alfred Schindler, which was uh, presented to you by Dr. Zareen when she was talking about this issue. <clears throat> Am I clear on this? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you very much then. We call it a day.